Tara here at O oh With The Gut, where we discuss everything to do with gut health. In today's video, I will be shedding light on Crohn's disease. This is a digestive condition that affects 7 million people around the world, including myself. The symptoms can be unbearable and debilitating, but there is hope in achieving remission. Make sure to keep watching until the end as I will be talking about why Crohn's is often misunderstood. First off, what the heck is Crohn's disease? Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease or IBD. It's a chronic condition in which the lining of the digestive tract becomes inflamed. The inflammation comes from the body's own immune response to the gut lining becoming compromised. This happens when the gut's tight junctions that make up the gut wall break and bacteria and chemicals make their way through. This starts an immune response by the body to defend against these bacteria and chemicals that shouldn't be passing through the gut into our bodies. There are several different types of Crohn's. Each type is based on which part of the GI tract is affected by the disease. First, iliac colitis affects the end of the small intestine, which is known as the terminal ileum and the beginning of the large intestine, which is known as the colon. Next, ileitis. This affects only the ileum. Then there's gastroodenum, Crohn's disease, which affects the stomach and the beginning of the small intestine. Next is jejunalitis. This affects the upper half of the small intestine called the jejunum. And last, lastly is granulomatous. This affects only the colon. But regardless of the area that you're experiencing symptoms, Crohn's inflammation can spread deep into the layers of the bowel tissue, leading to painful symptoms and complications. Now, let's dive into the symptoms. There are many symptoms associated with Crohn's disease, but here are some of the more common ones. Symptoms are, but not limited to, abdominal pain and cramping, diarrhea, fatigue, fever, blood in the stool, reduced appetite and weight loss, mouth sores, skin rashes, perianal disease, which may cause pain or drainage around the anus, hemorrhoids, which are swollen blood vessels in and outside the anus, and anal fistula, which is caused by improper drainage of glands surrounding the inside of the anus. I know all of this sounds horrible. Let's discuss why Crohn's is often misunderstood. It's misunderstood because it can happen anywhere along the bowel. Many people are confused by this because they think IBD happens only in the bowel. But as we have learned, Crohn's symptoms can happen in the mouth, lips, esophagus, anus, and anywhere in between. Crohn's most commonly affects the end of the small bowel, this is called the ileum, and the beginning of the colon. The severity and range of symptoms can vary from person to person, and some might even experience periods of remission where symptoms completely disappear. How wonderful does that sound? Now, let's talk about Crohn's disease versus ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis share similar symptoms and they are both types of inflammatory bowel disease, or again, IBD. But they are not the same illness and they affect different areas of the GI tract. Crohn's disease can affect any part
part of the GI tract from the mouth to the anus and can affect the entire thickness of the bowel wall, whereas ulcerative colitis only the colon and rectum are affected, and it only affects the innermost lining of the large intestinal wall. So what causes Crohn's disease? This is another reason why Crohn's is misunderstood, because the exact cause is unclear. Also troubling are the statistics showing an increase of diagnosis within the United States and other developed nations. Many researchers conclude that the cause and increase of occurrence are due to exposure to food chemicals and chemicals in our environment. I will go into this in greater detail in future videos. While the exact cause remains unclear, it is believed that a combination of factors plays a role. A microbiome imbalance can lead to IBD. This is when the balance of good bacteria to bad in the gut microflora tips due to environmental factors. This is called dysbiosis. Dysbiosis leads to inflammation which leads to disease. You can think of the gut microflora as soil in the garden. We know that we will get strong, healthy plants if we tend to the soil. This is the same for achieving optimal health in the body. We have to tend and feed the good gut bacteria to reach optimal health. Crohn's may also be hereditary. Occurrence is more common in individuals who have family members with the disease. And lastly, environmental factors. Things like a high fat diet or certain infections might contribute to Crohn's disease. Other environmental factors include chemicals found in food and everyday products. Studies have shown a strong correlation to disease occurrence and these chemicals. However, more studies need to be done. So, how do we treat Crohn's? Fortunately, there are treatments available to help manage this disease. First, there is medication. This includes anti-inflammatory drugs, immune system suppressors, and other specialized medicines tailored to the needs of the patient. However, it is important to discuss with your physician the potential side effects. Also, many of the current medications can become ineffective over time. It is important to have a discussion with your doctor and make a plan. Next is nutrition therapy. Many patients may require a special diet or nutritional supplements to manage or alleviate symptoms. Studies have shown the reduction in symptoms and even remission through fasting protocols and eating a diet tailored to improving the gut's microbiome. I believe this is one of the most important things you can do to improve your symptoms of Crohn's disease and overall health because it has helped me and many others. If you are unsure how to do this, I suggest meeting with a nutritionist who understands Crohn's and or food sensitivities. Also, there is a lot of great literature out there. One book that I love for preventing flares and achieving remission is called Crohn's and Colitis Flare Stopper by Galena Coatlier and books and videos by gastroenterologist Dr. Bulsowitz. A last treatment is surgery. In severe cases where medication isn't helping, a patient may need surgery to remove a damaged portion of the digestive tract. A healthcare professional will be able to determine the most suitable treatment approach based on symptoms and needs. I would like to tell you about my own story. 
I was diagnosed in February of 2023 with mild to moderate Crohn's. It was found through a routine colonoscopy. My diagnosis explained some of the symptoms I had been experiencing for the past few years. I had hemorrhoids removed in 2017, suffered what I would now call Crohn's flare-ups. I had two of them in the last four years. I've had on and off spouts of diarrhea and heartburn. And I also had an anal fistula, which I had surgery to take care of. And not once did a physician suggest to me I might have Crohn's. But thankfully, I was diagnosed with a mild case. I was first put on a medication called mesmaline. At the time I was diagnosed, I was feeling pretty great. I was eating well. I had already cut out most processed foods and was eating a whole foods diet. I wasn't super psyched to start a new medication. My gastroenterologist said I would be taking it for the rest of my life. And these pills are very large and I struggle swallowing large pills. She said I could cut them up or crush them, but the instructions on the package clearly state not to cut or crush as the medicine has to make it to the colon in order to be effective. So I opted out of that medication. I decided to go another route and I did a bunch of research into alternative treatments and found many that have been very successful for other Crohn's sufferers. I told my doctor and she said many patients have had success with lifestyle changes. So I started a food diary to find out which foods cause symptoms. Now I avoid foods that upset my digestion. For example, I cut out processed meats. They contain nitrates, which have been shown to disrupt the gut and were always giving me problems whenever I ate them. I cut out all commercial bread as I get a tightening of the throat after eating them. However, I don't believe I have a gluten sensitivity as I eat other things with gluten with no problem. I pretty much eat a whole foods diet. This makes deciding what to eat very easy as I only consume items that are grown in the ground or grazed in a pasture. I try to eat organic and as much as possible. I buy other, I buy all my meat from a company called Thrive Market, which has an excellent selection of grass fed items. And I buy other organic products there, such as salad dressings and sauces. The brand I buy from them is called Primal Kitchen by Mark Sissom. He is also another great resource and has a lot of content on eating healthy, chemical free foods. I like them because they don't use any processed seed oils, which have been found to be highly inflammatory. I will go into this into greater detail in a video called, What Food Chemicals Should I Avoid for Health? Another great resource I follow is Bobby Parrish on YouTube because he has a five ingredient cookbook, so it makes cooking quick and easy. He also takes you shopping, pointing out all the items with harmful chemicals you should avoid at the supermarket and what you should buy and where to find them. He also finds the best prices. He introduced me to Thrive Market, but he also shows you deals at other grocery stores such as Walmart. I also had my blood work done and found I'm deficient in magnesium iron and vitamin D. So I take supplements for that. Many Crohn's patients are nutrient and vitamin deficient because IBD causes absorption issues. I also take a product called Athletic Greens because it's a powerhouse of vitamins and minerals and 
and I can drink it in water rather than try and swallow a giant horse pill. I also take Aurora Colstrum. This is a really great product because it's specifically designed to improve gut health and reduce inflammation. I do still have occasional issues, but I am prioritizing my health and I'm feeling pretty good. So understanding Crohn's disease is the first step towards supporting those who live with this disease. There are many things that can be done to improve outcomes. Lifestyle changes in combination with medication and the advice of your doctor. If you are interested in learning more, please check out my channel, Oh What the Gut, for more information on Crohn's. Thank you for watching.